I am but an errant foolish knight. My sword hand pierced upon the thorns of courtly love. Truly, I have courted all as if romance is my questing beast. So many maidens, draped in mysterious heraldry. The houses of Dolce, Gabbana, Dior, Gucci. I returned to London Wake six years past, though it seems I have lost centuries in a pleasurable few. This age is so strange, and yet. The May Queen still assumes a new form each year, as do those mistresses hitherto unknown to me. Miss June, Miss July, and so forth. I have kept extensive records of their illustrated literature. Oh, the one true king thought I gave myself too fully to chivalric pursuits, but to woo is as much my life's work as to defend his realm. And I weep where his chasteness left him, slumbering forever in Avalon, alone, where once his marital bed was most accommodating. My charge as Knight of the Round is to safeguard this grove from the coming darkness. For lo, ages past, the Grail Cup was brought here, a flame with golden nectar supped from Gaia's fertile bosom. Sometimes you take tree-hugging to a new and creepy place, John. Yet you too feel the pull of magic. Passionate. Even sensual to this ancient oak. That is why light and life have thrived in its great shade, blossomed, become ripe, heavy in fruit. Tis too much. Tis way, way too much. When first I arrived, the Templars challenged my right, claiming this park was theirs alone to ward. Also, that my dalliances with those ravishing twin sisters was impropriety. In both affairs, their understanding of the pursuit of beauty is so sadly wanting. Mark my speech. This is nothing less than the city's most sacred place. Only a lover could defend it. Indeed, tis a storied cast of players who inhabit these Eldwick grounds. Fairy Ken, knight's true mighty sorceress. Perhaps the ages have not changed so much. And the temptresses. Such temptresses of every hue, every color of dress. Many times over have I been advised to keep to my own affairs. At least many other times I recall the term affair being brandished. Thus it was with great cautiousness of judgment that I took in the fair Cali of the Tartans. Yet a knight without a squire is as a lance that thrusts untrue. And none could ask for a squire more fiery or independent than she. Fervent were her virtuous rejections, and I have responded twofold, sixfold, a scorefold with renewed oaths of eternal fealty. <laughs> Would that I recall the words once she spake. Ah, oh, yes, yes. John, your sword is not going anywhere near my stone. Oh, such japery. I harbored such hope that Templars and I would share in the bonds of chivalrous kinship. Our knights enlivened by the camaraderie between young minds, the vigorous debate of cardinal virtues. Alas, I have been expelled from their halls again and again, even as I protested the profundity, the genuineness of my feelings on this matter. There are kind of laws against the way you profoundly and genuinely feel things. I suffered them to cast doubt upon my honor and knightly lineage. I had to suffer them casting you into the street without your clothes. That was an eyeful. I had partaken of the pool. I could not fault their zealotry. Their humility leaves much to be desired. Tis not a knight's place to impose his order upon the world. 
For whom do Templars rule? Themselves or the people of the land? Verily. I would pine for the counsel of my lost brothers and forgotten Camelot. Were there not so many distractions? Beautiful, beautiful distractions. Ah! Le monde invisible. A stranger creature never did I encounter in all my travails. Tis a darkened veil, drawn down between us and the lives of good common menfolk and women. Who celebrates the May Rain? How different the stories told around the glow of television, if any tell at all. I am rebuked by Templars and others. Should I recount my deeds to a passing maiden by way of courtship? Even said maiden regards me with sly incredulity and speaks... You don't have to talk funny, John. Just buy me a drink. I found him out at the tower blocks once, asking them to let down their cornrows. And yet, and yet, when children give me audience, I am reassured that they still dream of being comely princesses, bold knights, players of ball games. Fair Callie, is this not the real life? Am I just a fantasy? Art thou caught in a landslide? Ha! You jest. But I think it'd be the jest of love. Excalibur. The singer, the opener, the ender. You should know the one true king wielded it like a sunrise. And lo, every face in the land was upturned to it, living and dead. Twas Gaia herself who proffered the blade to him in one story from a pool of golden honey, in another from a well of blackest night. Merlin told me both. I know not which was more true. He was touched in the head, mayhaps driven so for the jealousy of Morgana's thighs, Yet, that is another tale. One I fear I could not recount in the detail its ravishing subject deserves. Never mind the psycho redhead. What happened to the sword? Like that flamed-haired sorceress, it passed on. Dream. It came upon us to unlock the mysteries of the world, and then it disappeared. Back a moment. Never did I set eyes on it again. The ghosts of Avalon still repeated so. 